Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Texas Mortgage Boss Podcast. My name is James J. And today I am going to be joined by Realtor James Dickerson with Keller Williams Realty. And today's topic, five ways to handle a low appraisal. Stay tuned. Hey, James, what's up? How are you? I am great, sir. I am unstoppable. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. Great to uh, to, to talk to you again. Um, we are going to, to discuss a really hot topic for the entire year, and that is how to handle low appraisals. Uh, I'm sure you have seen this throughout the year as well as myself. Uh, so we're going to address this because a lot of people are confused about what to do when this happens. Um, now, you as the realtor, obviously, you're guiding your you know, buyers and, and directing, them, uh, directing them as to what they can do. But for people that maybe are in the process of purchasing or maybe in the process of getting an appraisal done, and maybe they're concerned about what might happen with that appraisal value and what they can do uh, if it does come in low, we're going to discuss that today. But before we do that, how are you? How's everybody doing family-wise? Uh, it's holiday time, so this is a good time of year for all of us. Yes, uh, everybody's doing well. Uh, we're having an unstoppable time, and yep. hey, happy holidays to you. Absolutely, you too. So uh, for people that may not have seen the previous interview we did, uh, first of all, go back and watch it, uh, but give people a little intro to yourself uh again i know you're with keller williams but i give a little, little bit of background and then we're going to get into the topic because this is a this is something super important for people to know what their options are because again it's happening it continues to happen um because it is seller's market right now yes. and uh, sellers are really trying to take advantage of it so <laughs> uh before we get into that tell people a little bit about yourself um uh with uh with kw and you know kind of like your background a little bit all right. Uh, I start with my background uh, before I got with KW. Uh, I, I was in retail. I've been in retail yeah. 20 plus years. Yep. And and I wanted uh, the reason why I got into real estate is to be able to help people on a bigger level. Yeah. So uh, bigger purchases. And, and me and myself, I, I really enjoy people and connecting with people. And it's so many different stories and different things with people that you, you can learn and you yeah. just open your eyes to. And I, 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 I love it, every bit of it. So yeah, I went so, to the world. So I was going to ask you, because I know you are, you do a lot of social media posts. I'm going to ask you about this, and then we're going to get into the topic. So um, you are always talking about un being unstoppable. So I want people to, first of all, go find James on social media. Um, we'll give you all, give all that, that contact information uh, in a little bit here. But uh, tell me about the unstoppable theme, because that is like a theme for your life. Where did that come from? Um, but I, and I love it, by the way. I absolutely love the uh, mindset. But I'm curious to know where that came from. Well, uh, it came from me. I like uh, pumping people up. I always yeah. say, you know, I, and so I start, you know, it, it all came to me all of a sudden. You know yeah. what? Hey, we are unstoppable. So no matter what challenges comes comes to you, yeah. uh, even if you're having a bad day, you can still continue to be unstoppable no matter yeah. what. So you, only you can let your own self down. I refuse to let myself down for anything. Uh, yeah. I'm always going, 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 and I love that. Uh, so I continue to be unstoppable in everything I touch and everything I do, even with people I come in contact with. I, I, I train them the same way. Hey, you know yeah. what? Um, uh, I cannot do this. And no way. We don't do can't around here. We are unstoppable. <laughs> I so, love I, it. Yes, yeah, so I'm always telling them, my kids are always telling me, well, I can't do that. I'm like, uh -uh, uh, no, 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 no. Don't yeah. tell me. I literally, I tell my kids this all the time. So yeah. I love that when you, when I see you post about being unstoppable, uh, it is something that's motivating because it's a mindset thing, right? Yes, sir. It's, Absolutely. It's, it's I mean, as, as cliche as it may sound and people like, it, it's true, man. <laughs> you you got to talk to yourself. You know, you you your mentality and the way you think about anything it's just going to drive it. So, you know, if you're, you're waking up and you just start off and you want to, if you choose to have a bad day, nobody can make you have a bad day. <laughs> no, absolutely <laughs> not. Absolutely it. not. Doesn't matter what anybody else does. So I love One thing about it, uh, it's it always good to have a, even if you have a bad day, put a smile on your face, 
because you're you're not sure who you're really helping out there. Because right. someone can have a day that's worse than yours, yeah. and, and a, 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 a great smile of greeting them yeah. will open a lot more doors for you. And Absolutely, great no, no question about it. So yeah, I, I love your uh, I love your posts. I love the uh, the unstoppable theme. So keep doing it. So uh, as we head into the uh, the holiday season. You know, we're we're going to help people be unstoppable and getting into their home. Absolutely. And we're not gonna let that low appraisal keep them. We're not gonna let that low appraisal stop them, right? <laughs> be unstoppable in this home buying process. So so let's get into uh to today's topic, which is five ways to handle a low appraisal value. Like I said, we've seen it all year long, right? It's a huge seller's market. The first seven months of this year have been insane and a lot of sellers are taking the opportunity to overprice their house. Yes. <laughs> they're taking the opportunity and they're running with it. So um, on your end, you know, I think I've seen a little bit of a slowdown the last couple of months with, you know, the overpricing and the overbidding, should I say, because that is what led to a ton of low appraisal values this year. Unlike any year I have ever seen in the history of my you know, 18 years being in this business, I've never seen this many low appraisal low appraisal values. But that's largely because again, it's just a very crazy market this year. Um, but we want to give some strategies, tips for people if they do have a low appraisal because it's still happening. And so people may be a little confused about okay, some I think some of the stuff is, is maybe obvious, but there's some other things that people may be able to do to help in a situation where they have a low appraisal. So Let's start with tip number one, James, how to handle a low appraisal value. And this is in no particular order, by the way, guys. Yes. Uh, one of the things you can look at as is uh, the appeal uh, errors and also yep. the comps. A lot of times they're not reading the comps right. So that could be a big factor to that as well. Make sure your agent like myself always give people comparisons so to market their home so before they won't yep. overprice it. Uh, no things uh, you can get, definitely get a second opinion if you don't think it came back correctly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the third thing, third thing, you can rene or re go or no <laughs> renegotiate yep. with the seller, uh, but you know what? They have to agree to it and be up to it. So you make sure you know you have you know you, you're doing everything right and treating everybody correctly. Yeah. So you can definitely talk to your sellers. That maybe they may come to some kind of agreement for you. Um, Fourth thing, you can pay the difference. Yeah. You know, and you know, if you bid for a home for two hundred grand and you went to four hundred grand, you can pay the difference on that. That's yeah. really up to you. Uh, you can, and also you can change lenders. But understand, that even when you change lenders, uh, the lenders cannot uh, give you more than the appraised value of the home. That's something they cannot do. Correct. So let's unpack these a little bit more. So as far as comps go, uh, for people to understand this, so. Uh, appraisal value comes in low. Um, you as a buyer's agent or listing agent, whatever the side may, whichever in you know, whatever side you're you're working, but uh, you and the seller can provide comps to the appraisal. Okay, so for people who don't know what a comp is, it's a comparable house. That's, yes. that's what a comp is, right? So you've got you three bedroom, four fifteen hundred square foot single story house. You're trying to find something comparable that's recently sold. Uh, there are situations where appraisers miss comps. They do. You would think they wouldn't, but they do. So for you working, if you're working the buyer side, James, you know, you and the seller agent can come together and look at the appraisal, see what comps the appraisal actually use and say, well, hey, why are you using that one when you could have used this one? Right. Yeah. So you you guys go back to the to, to get together, you and the agent get together and you provide additional comps to the appraiser. Okay? Yes, so absolutely. it might be maybe a comp that they miss, or it just might be a comp that they're using that you and the seller just don't agree. Like, why are you using that? Right. Yes, so absolutely. Um, now I will say this, like doing this for as long as I have, like appraisers don't like to change things. <laughs> they don't, <laughs> you know, they, they just don't, but th it does happen. Like there, there are times where they will go back and say, you know what, you're right. I missed that. Or maybe I shouldn't have added this comp. So they do change their mind every now and then, but they don't like to. They don't. Uh, it's almost like you know we're questioning them, questioning their their ability to do their job, which 
That's what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Also, and say when I'm listening to home, um, I, I do uh, comparative uh, to other homes, right? Before, so that you can definitely list your home right. Now, yeah. don't get me wrong. As the owner, you can list a home uh, where you want to. Right. But my thing is, I say, you know what? These these are best selling points for your home. Yeah. And, uh, and I find out how much they want to gain from their home. That's yep. how we start doing the comparison. That's what I do with my clients. Yeah. And that's the way. That's well, listen. That, that's the right way to do it. Uh, unfortunately, you and I both know it doesn't always happen that way. Agents don't. Nah. Do it. <laughs> they don't yeah. do it that way. Two hundred dollar home. I want to sell it for a million dollars. They don't have the guts, I'm going to use that word, um, to talk to a seller and tell them the truth about their home. Your house yeah. is not worth that, right? You, we can't we can't sell it for that. Uh, yeah. But again, this year has been such a crazy year. Sellers are some, not all, I'm going to say every seller, but there's a lot of sellers that are just really, really, uh, I wouldn't say gouging. You know, they're, they're just trying to take advantage of the situation as much as they can. And I, mean, I can't be mad at them. You know, they, they see what's going on in the news. They see what's happening, not even just in Texas. It's happening everywhere. Yeah, you know? So they're trying to cash in. So I'm not not mad at a seller for, for doing it. But this leads to low appraisals all the time because they're overpricing it. Um, and oftentimes, and I know you've seen this in the beginning of the year, you know, these sellers didn't even want to sell the VA buyers, nor did they want to sell the FHA buyers. Why? Because there's a clause in both of those loan programs that says if this house doesn't appraise for this value, you have the ability to walk away. Yes. Doesn't mean they were, but it does give them the option. So, you know, earlier in the year, you have sellers that are saying, I'm only going to sell to conventional. That was happening over and over and over. And it was very frustrating if you're a first time buyer going to FHA or VA buyer, right? Now so, you can do that with the conventional loans as well. So uh, if it didn't place for this price, so yeah, you can have, you can renegotiate some things as well. Right, and then you can renegotiate. It's just you know on a conventional loan, of course, there's just no clause that's in the yes. in that in a conventional loan. Whereas the clause is in the VA loan and it's in an FHA loan, and so sellers were basically saying they didn't want to deal with them. So uh, because they knew a lot of times the appraisal was going to come in low, right? Yeah. <laughs> they Absolutely. Knew. <laughs> and so, you know, early in the year, you have sellers that were just saying, hey, you know what? If it comes in lower, we don't care. We still want this sale price. Um, and a lot of people were willing to do it. So um, so the second thing you had mentioned was a second opinion. So I want to be clear about this because you can really only get a second opinion. Uh, you can do it conventional. Uh, typically, VA, FHA, once they appraise that house, unless the appraiser goes back and you can provide some comps to change what that appraiser came up with. Um that that appraisal is going to stick, right? It's going to stick. Now, not necessarily on a conventional loan. So uh, there might be an opportunity to get a second opinion, but on an FHA loan, VA loan, really won't matter, right? That appraisal is going to stick. Um, renegotiating. So I want you to elaborate a little bit more on this because um, people may not have caught everything. So when you say renegotiate, right? Buyer, seller. Yes. Um, you sit down with a buyer uh, yeah. and, a, and a seller and uh, talk to, try to come to a conclusion of what you can do. Uh, sometimes the seller might go down a certain amount and yep. you just have to pay that certain amount. Yep. And sometimes the seller would not negotiate the price. They want their money. Yes. So you, you have to pay it. Yep. If, if we really want their home, you have to pay it. Yep. So yeah. we, yeah. we, we got to make sure we do the homework for our clients. And so they can understand, Hey, this is what can, can happen. Yes. So, so something do come up. Yeah. So, um, and part of that is the whole buyer paying the differences. So these kind of merging a little bit the the two two of the uh, two of the, the tips here. But yeah, so a seller could come down in this market. A lot of them are not. No. You know, they're being stubborn. Not all of them, but a lot of them are not willing to come down because you know their heads are swollen up because they think they can get whatever they want for their house. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> but. The seller, if they're just, just just use a real number here. So just say there's a twenty thousand dollar gap between what the house appraised for versus what the seller is asking. So the appraisal is twenty thousand less than what the sale price is. All right, the seller could come down twenty grand. We know that usually doesn't happen, <laughs> but they could. Um, the seller could come down you know, half of that and the buyer could come up and pay the difference, right? That's an option too. 
uh, what's happening a lot in 2021 is the seller says, I'm not doing anything. You bring all the money, buyer. <laughs> that's what's been happening this year. Yeah. Right? That's what's been happening. And so uh, I think a lot of buyers are doing it. But for a first time buyer, like that is a tough, which is why it's been frustrating for a lot of first time buyers this year, right? That's a hard thing. You know, you're, you're a first time buyer, you're thinking FHA three and a half percent. And now the seller's like, hey, house came in 20 grand short. You need to bring that difference. You know, I mean, that's a very difficult thing for a lot of first time buyers. We Absolutely. Do. So uh, there are people that do have the, have the, the resources to do it. But I would say overall, first time buyers are not going to be able to pay more than asking, uh, nor are they going to be able to pay the difference if it's a significant amount of money. But if you know you're talking a couple hundred, excuse me, a couple hundred, a couple thousand dollars off on an appraisal, you know, maybe a buyer is willing to, to pay that. Yeah. So each situation is going to be very different. Uh, I know you handle this very well with, with your clients being able to negotiate this stuff uh, and yeah. not letting deals fall, fall apart because the other thing that they could do, James, but we really didn't say the buyer could just walk. Yeah. Right? They can. They can. They that's another yeah. way of handling the lower appraisal. You can say, I'm out. I'm not buying it. Yeah. Right. You could. Um, I don't see that happening a lot, but people, but that is an option for a buyer. So yeah. again, especially on an FHA and VA, that's the clause. You can walk away. So, um, you know, that's just probably tip number six. You can just walk if you yeah. wanted to. <laughs> uh, but a lot of people get to a point where they put so much time and energy by the time the appraisal is done, they don't want to just walk. Right. Um, they want to work it out with the seller uh, and it doesn't always happen. But I think most buyers, you know, they would like to work it out because they've already spent money. They spent money on the appraisal. They spent yeah. money on inspection. They spent time, energy, and they don't want to walk away. Right. It's just it's it's a it's a process already. It's a challenge just getting a home in, in a normal market. Um, but this market is nothing but normal. Like nothing, nothing. There's nothing normal about this market. So, yeah, it's a crazy right. market right now. It's definitely a crazy market. Yeah. So you know, as we head to you know towards the end of the uh, end of the year uh, and into next year, um, you know, appraisals. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen in 2022. Um, you know, I have seen a slowdown. I don't know about your end. Have you seen some of the crazy craziness slow down a little bit on your end? Uh, some, but you know, I, I, it's still out there, and it, yeah. it's you know, trying to negotiate certain things is yep. it's still a little different for sure. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, we'll 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 come back, James. We'll, we'll kind of re, we'll revisit, man. I, I love getting your your expertise on this. Um, on there's so many different topics that you're you're really good at at discussing and, and navigating uh, and being able to break things down for people uh, in, you, a, in a way that's that's understandable right because there's a lot of stuff that goes into buying owning a home and buying a home absolutely uh, this appraisal issue man it's been a crazy year to say the least it really has with with this 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 appraisals these appraisals coming in lower um but i am hoping that you know next year we don't see you know i think things are leveling off already um you know you're not going to have another uh, topic where we talk about kind of what the expectations are uh, for 2022 so stay tuned for that one james and i are going to discuss this this uh whole a uh, market crash thing that people think may happen in 2022 i don't think it's going to happen but we're going to save that for the next video uh we've got some good stuff to talk about there but i want people to be able to reach you james so what's the best way for people to be able to reach you oh my cell is 281-883-8426 uh my instagram page is living underscore in underscore houston my YouTube channel is living in Houston and surrounding areas. And my Facebook page is uh, at James Dickerson Realtor. Got it. So, uh, and then you've got your uh, YouTube channel as well. Yes, sir. Um, and that is living in Houston. And surrounding areas. And surrounding areas. So, guys, go check, check James out. Social media, um, great resource for you guys if you are looking to own a home. Um, and what areas you serve all of all of uh, all of all Houston and surrounding areas? Yeah, I'm here so for. It. Go check out James's YouTube channel and reach out to him on social media as well. I appreciate you, James. Thank you, thank you for the uh, the expertise today, and uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Please make sure you guys go like, share, and subscribe. All right, YouTube channel uh, for us. Go check that out. 
And uh, James, I appreciate you. Yes, please like, share, and subscribe for us. Um, leave us a review, give us some feedback, and reach out to James. I appreciate you. Happy holidays to you, James, and your family. Um, and for everybody else that's watching, we appreciate you. We will see you guys soon. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you.